New Earth Cosmic Conversations Welcome, beloveds. This is Anwita Melchizedek, and I'd like to welcome you to this wonderful New Earth Conversation with myself and Sandra Walters. I'm sure many of you know of Sandra Walters, just this incredible, magnificent, light worker, way shower, grid worker, and really just an incredible, incredible star sister. So I'm so delighted to be here with Sandra. I had sent her a message and asked if she would like to co-create with me and come together and present just all the beautiful co-creations and teachings that we're all experiencing in this new earth journey as we deepen into love. And with that, Sandra and I have decided that we are going to put together an incredible tele summit for all you wonderful light tribe and beautiful earthly angels. So we truly so very excited to be with you today. And we're gonna start by just having a little bit of a chat, what's going on in the new earth realities as we deepen into unity consciousness and community and where we are energetically, what's happening around the planet, what's happening with the stargates, what's happening with our own bodies, how we are connecting deeper into the earth grid, how we are connecting deeper into all the beautiful elements and elementals and crystals and lifting and experiencing a deeper level of our own vibration through the crystalline consciousness that also comes through the crystal consciousness. Mm -hmm. So welcome, Sandra. Well, it's so wonderful to be connecting with you. And as I say that, I'm just really experiencing just as heartfelt connection to this just beautiful conduit of um this connection and love yeah i'm feeling that too sister thank you so much for inviting me into this beautiful co-creation and i feel like everything right now needs to have that element of co-creation so i feel it's it's perfect timing because i've been teaching that and saying that and trying to convey that yeah. message that we are experiencing unity consciousness and we can accelerate it for all of our brothers and sisters when we unify, when we come together, especially way showers who are seasoned as we are at communicating higher messages that have now really integrated into our beingness. And when we have that full experience of pure unity, Christic consciousness, that crystalline state um, not just coming into our fields, but really just becoming who we are when we have that merge of higher self, Christ itself, mm -hmm. and source presence really coming in in a very strong way right now. We need to express it. You know, we need to, um, we, we ground it into these physical realities by taking these, these actions of joy and divine love and divine co-creation and just kind of exploring and playing with uh, this newfound level of our own consciousness that's returning to us. So this is, in my perspective, um, while it can feel quite uh, quantum, you know, myself as a gatekeeper, you get glimpses of what's going on with the cosmos and everything, but everything that's happening in this reality, in our, in our lower realities and in these densities, is just reflections of what's happening at the higher level. So the more that we can bring in those um, that quantum crystalline consciousness and that yeah. multidimensional awareness into um, a physical expression of, uh, of co-creation and unity, um, the easier it is for everyone. Because I feel that we do affect the human heart grid system, that crystalline yeah. grid that we're all anchoring right now through our own heart consciousness. So the more that we can express it and play with it and create all of that future stuff in the now, um, the easier it is for everyone else. And it's perfect timing that we're connected. Absolutely, exactly. Heading into that solstice energy as well, which is just really another gateway opening. And in fact, as I understand this, apart from the crystal consciousness, what we're having too is just deeper levels of the integration of the diamond light. 
And for me, that diamond light is so very, very much about the purity consciousness. It's purity, it's innocence. It's really just the, the cosmic light infusion of all the crystalline rays, frequencies, crystal consciousness coming together in one and facets of that being reflected as we deepen into that wholeness. And so those facets then are just reflecting aspects of the consciousness that are being integrated into the consciousness of one. And for me, it's been an interesting experience because there's two levels to that, that that I experience quite strongly. One is just that deep connection into the soul consciousness, which we call, whether we call it that our higher self, our beloved I am presence, from within. So it's just really that, that through the heart chakra with the soul consciousness radiating out. And within that, then it's listening to the soul speaking. So it's listening to the universe, which is guiding us so deeply in that flow, in that trust, in every aspect of our manifestation as co-creators to the divine. It's coming from that within coming out and being able to surrender been able to just completely trust that all is unfolding perfectly and as it's meant to be, but it creates a new flow. And so we get very much still the aspects that are being cleared at that cellular level or through those unique experiences, those sub-personality aspects that have, are still being integrated into that reunion of hearts. So we have a little voice coming up or the human side that you know starts to whisper a little bit and then we've got this real galactic side our soul consciousness or the beloved i am presence just activating even louder or guiding us so it's so interesting to just observe that that that, that level of holding consciousness because holding consciousness in is a galactic level isn't it with with the consciousness of observing and consciousness and from that in my own experience what is happening is everything is talking <laughs> and listening to the universe. <laughs> it's the crystals are talking and the animals are talking and it's just the earth is talking. And I feel it's just because the earth is, you know, she's, she's ascending as we know and, and, and has moved into the template of the new earth and that light body energetic matrix so connected to our own energy is just amplifying. And as it's doing, so it's not just now energetically that we're experiencing that, which is such a huge part of what we're bringing in through our energy field, through the unity grid, through the stargates, through that connection that we have to the realms of illumined truth and all these beautiful core cool groups assisting us. But it's actually through the energy of Mother Earth's heart that we are experiencing our hearts and that sense of unity and coming together so much now almost almost rooted and grounded into that expression of what we're feeling and experiencing from the elemental aspects of creation. Mm -hmm. And realizing the power of that feeling too. I feel it, it's just it's so brilliant what has this this you know somewhat linear unfoldment of one thing after the other especially this year it's so accelerated we have this this true um experience of loss of identity and and you feel kind of avatar like for a while and then you kind of ground in and you're in the, the heart to the realm of gaia again you know so there's this constant um yeah. A reorganization of what it means to be uh, in a body, what it means to express as your pure essence through there. So the the, the merge of consciousness is all. It's all of those aspects coming into mm -hmm. divine alignment with that true divine blueprint, and and the the shifting of the magnetics through all these stargates, and the shifting the magnetics with. Gaia and all the shaking that's going on right now. It's just loosening all of the old structures and all the old, old structures within us and we're just watching it drop away. And it's beautiful to witness that um, releasing simultaneously as this new level of awareness is coming in and this true freedom and creativity 
and the recognition that we need to move into fully utilizing that new freedom and our true feeling center because this is becoming a very positive, positively polarized um, magnetic that's coming in with yeah. um, our heart centers activating. And when we can really move into community consciousness and focus on utilizing that to create exactly um, what we what we visualize, what we're exposed to in the higher realms as new earth, that new earth template, we're able to do it for ourselves and for our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. So, and it's again that element of play is um, is beautiful because it is very freeing to yes. feel that, to feel the release yes. of all of those all of those old structures. And joy, it's like I find myself beaming with joy which is just so incredible just this joy that beams from within coming out is just expanding and i just get so excited and you know i can say as a as a seasoned light worker that it wasn't always like that because we've been through so many challenges and i know some of us are still going through those challenges and of course as we know through those unique experiences that we've had to know ourselves as love and taking on a portion of the karma of humanity so that all life could experience themselves as love has also been those, those particular traumas that have opened our hearts because at some stage as energetically sensitive souls, you know, many of us made that decision just to close down because you were in overwhelm. There was just so much going on. I mean, if we go back 10 years and even 20 years and, you know, I've been doing this light work as you have for 20 plus years. And it's really, if I look from there to now, which again, we're not, we're just shifting, we're just moving timelines of actually just seeing how we're in such a completely different space and place that on some level, all we were doing until this point was really activating the dormant DNA, awakening to the knowing of ourselves as love, awakening to the knowing that we are, you know, the light of God upon the sacred earth. And for a long time, we were just expressing it and having moments of it. And now that consciousness is anchored and seated within our loving hearts. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just incredible because that's the shift in consciousness. Yes. Yes. And it's beautiful to witness that consistency. I, I noted that too. We, you mentioned like the soul merge last September and that was so strong. It was right after the eclipse and it was so strong. Mm -hmm. It just took all of the all of the struggle and everything we had done up until that moment just kind of got washed away. It was just gone. It was a complete renewal. And then you have to move into applying that to your life stream and adjusting everything and adjusting your own personal timelines to align with this much higher trajectory that we're all on. But the experience of it being consistent and and i i had a, a message I, I i gave a message just a couple months ago i was like it's like you can't screw it up anymore <laughs> you know it's like no matter what you do it's on 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 and even the in those moments where there's challenges they just they just dissipate so quickly it wow. everything just it's like a like a divine locking mechanism has suddenly turned on where we were ready, Gaia was ready, we did enough work, the frequencies came in, the stargates opened and we're there. Yes, yeah. yes. Because we talk so much about, you know, activating the dormant DNA. So that is really essentially all the work that we've been doing, whether it's through sound, colors, sacred geometry, of course, all the cosmic frequencies and, and ray frequencies and, and high vibrational frequencies. This is really what we're talking about, the high vibe. You know, all of that has just come online on a completely new level that we haven't experienced previously. And it's just incredible and amazing. And um, we're holding that. You know, again, it's just not only taking yourself into that high frequency vibration, but being able to hold it and from that space to really just feel because everything is about feeling. Um, you know, we've got, I feel a large number of us are really just um, embracing that energetic matrix of deepening into how we're feeling and embracing all that arises because when we're doing that, of course, 
then it doesn't really matter what perceived challenge is coming up. We are just not only accepting it, but we're actually finding appreciation in it and finding greater levels through that in appreciation of all that we're experiencing. And as we know, it's really sort of shifting personality, shifting through so many different personalities and, and aspects of ourselves. So from one day to the next, it's sometimes it's like, I think, well, who am I today? <laughs> you know? I don't know if you get that feeling sometimes. <laughs> yeah, just moment to moment. Oh, there's, and, and I feel that that is this beautiful simultaneous experience of the multidimensional self. Yeah. As we used to try to identify, you know, from an egoic, emotional, grounded level, you tried to identify who you were and what you were doing. And now yes. it's so freeform. And you are all that. Yes. Whatever yes. God wants in that moment, <laughs> you know, whatever serves in that moment is what is what presents, you know, the stronger aspect of this or that. That's it's, right. Yeah. Because they also integrate it, you know, so for a long time, I was a Pleiadian star seed and I was a high priestess and <laughs> I was a, an ambassador and an emissary. And now you're all those. So there isn't something specific that you are, you just are, which is really a different way of saying we, we just, we just being. So it's just an, really just an incredible sense of presence. I feel that that's really, you know, the word that comes to mind, that presence, that stillness, just holding that. And from that space, then, you know, through that template, that template of the loving heart, that template of being grounded and centered with that deep desire to be of service is how we're going forth. Because that disillusionment really started to shift. And for those who are still experiencing it, that is shifting for you. You know, trust in this because if we are experiencing it, trust that you too are experiencing it. The same as um, rapid acceleration of the body regeneration and rejuvenation process, because this has really been a big one for me, you know, with part of my work and everything that I was doing as this incredible channel, I still saw that my life wasn't in balance. This for me was just between kids and between the work and, um, you know, just a desire to be of service, which is really not a, it's not a job, it's our life, isn't it, Sandra, as every light worker will, con you know, um, contest to that mm -hmm. and um, so it was just one day realizing I, I can't do this or you know I'm not in a flow of harmony and balance that I'd like to be in and there was still an aspect of disillusionment there was an aspect of you know kind of feeling a little bit of that stress and feeling that struggle and, and, and feeling you know is it always going to be like this even though I would have huge moments of being in those high vibrational frequencies and, you know, amplified through all these beautiful light beings that are coming through and assisting us and through, of course, my own beloved I am presence. There were still those moments then where the, where the, the shift was, it was, you know, expansion and integration, expansion and integration. And in the integration, then the frequency would go down and you, you would be holding it and then the frequency would go up. So it's going down, shifting a little bit of like a roller coaster energy and then holding it. And each time that octave would, would, would be getting a little bit higher. And then there's a point from that where the soul goes, okay, you're ready. I'm ready to embody you. And it's this temple of light because I know this is what we've chosen. This is the whole journey to this point while there is no destination. It's just multiple points of extended infinity and in absolutely every direction like cosmic oscillating rays, there is that point of merging and integration where we were never separate and coming back into unity consciousness. And from that point, we then go forth. So I say that to, to, to let all of you out there that are still experiencing some of your own challenges that you've chosen, that that too will come to a time of expanding into just the blessings that will come through and I speak certainly from experience through my own trauma and my own heartache that I too experienced at some point in my life as so many of us have so 
if you are at that point, just hold on to knowing that that shift that has been made for so many of us at this time is coming for all of us. Yeah. And it is that faith. It is, you know, there is that element of faith that um, gets you through that. And, and for me, it was always, you know, when you did, um, uh, when we did reach those um, challenges, you know, everyone has had those challenges. But when, you, when you're in that state of challenge and you can find within yourself um, even evidence of when you were high vibe, you know, if you're in, that, in those moments, you know, you can always remind yourself, what evidence do I have in my own personal journey that there is more? that I have experienced more, that I have had those glimpses of my own pure self. And when you can kind of pull those into the now and just kind of hold your heart and realize this is just part of the journey. There's nothing here but love. There is nothing but grace. There is nothing here but source. It's just source sorting itself out so that it can express right through us. And, and trust, you know, look to your brothers and sisters, not as um, gurus or leaders, but as, as fellow mm -hmm. companies, um, just it, allowing that to occur so that it's available for everyone. You know, you become the conduit of that presence on earth in service. Mm -hmm. Is it is the wrong service to go through everything that you've been through, not for your personal life stream, but for everyone, and and it's also for the kingdoms and the elementals and and Gaia and and this is a galactic and universal shift. So it is your part of that huge operation. Just trust it. Yeah, just trust it. Such a big one because I still find you know although I would say I'm. Mostly there, there are still those little moments that come up, which we're talking about the, the human voice coming up with that trust. So particularly, you know, in shifting, and, and, and I feel so many of us, too, as I've seen it in my own life, since that six, September, October last year, shift in focus, a shift in direction, a shift in the way that um, the work or service work is expressing itself and different... Um, extensions of that into greater levels of heart streamings and passions and joy coming online at the same time although listening to the voice of the soul is just that aspect of the trust because there's still a little bit of the cellular memories where that support hasn't been there for us in a way that we would we truly felt supported or um, the abundance hasn't been there in a way we truly would have liked or everything just fell apart so part of that little small voice in the in the clearing is going well what if no one meets us no what if no one greets us what if we still must see what if we don't make that money <laughs> what if we can't support ourselves uh you know and although it doesn't happen to me often what i do is i really just embrace it you know I just come here i just want to love you you know i just want to love you that little voice and you know let me tell you everything is working out just perfectly that all is well and that's really what you're talking about in that level of when we're trusting, it's also just knowing that we are source, that we are the light of God, that we are these flames of divinity and those sub-personality aspects of ourselves. We're going, you know, come here and I love you. You know, I love you for what you've taught me. I love you for what you've shown me. I love you for every single aspect of um, the characters that you've played out through those unique experiences to show that we are love by accepting, by giving a voice, by forgiving, by releasing blame, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's when we get to that moment of appreciation that we start to experience just great levels of gratitude in our own life. And not only then are we experiencing, you know, the synchronicities, which are just pretty amazing. Isn't it numbers talking to you? <laughs> what are you talking about? One, four, four. Yeah. I see 11, 11 all the time. And 12, 12, and 13, 13, and 22, 22. It's just amazing. Um, you know how everything is really just talking, including the body, the body consciousness. Mm -hmm. So it's like the, 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 the body itself 
is saying, okay, this is my level of discomfort. And we're coming into that micro cosmic perspective of, okay, you know, let's shift these hormones or let's work with these enzymes or let's tune into these glands so it's working almost in a way with the body in a completely new way too or rather a more natural way but we just haven't been able to do that because we didn't listen to the bodies did we you know we weren't listening to the body we weren't listening to the soul because we had shut down through the perceived trauma and the overload the sensory overload and now as everything is coming back online where the, where the body is going, that I'm safe. And the soul is going, I'm guiding you. Mm -hmm. You are love. You are loved. We are one. Life is amazing. You are amazing. And when we start to listen to that voice of love, that is when everything just starts to present in multicolored, multidimensional realities of unity and oneness. Absolutely. And this was quite direct for me. I was in a, a major car accident back in December and my body was taken flat. <laughs> you know, and I had to stop and go into deep healing and deep releasing of traumas that I didn't even realize the body was holding on to. Even traumas of, you know, I'm gatekeeper on Mount Shasta and I have a lot of contact experiences with other beings appearing and weird things happening. I had no idea that my body uh, was, was storing a level of fear of, you know, reacting to that because I was consistently parenting my body. Like, it's okay. It's just, you know, it's just this, it's just that being whatever. And I found with, um, with my healing journey, that even though I was, um, it appeared that I was releasing the trauma of the accident itself because there were some very strong impacts which really kind of shatter the body and make it scared. And as I was releasing that, I realized, oh, I'm also releasing the trauma of, you know, coming into contact with beings and seeing things and mm -hmm. in the field and very bizarre um, in interactions and experiences and contact. And my body wanted to release all of that so that it could move into a more um, divine flow uh, with, with the galactics and a divine flow with my own galactic aspects because I was treating it more of um, on, a, on an emotional level, you know, I was feeling into, wow, this is such a beautiful feeling of divine love and divine contact and I can't believe this is happening and it's beautiful and everything but my body was still a little freaked out you know and, and I was just like constantly um, kind of um, getting it to be calm in those situations and my body is like I didn't want to feel calm <laughs> in those situations I wanted to run you know kind of thing so it was beautiful to release that and I feel like the, the energies and the frequencies and, and the level of unity consciousness that we've attained as a collective, collective way showership, the way showers have really anchored in this level of unity consciousness where so much of that trauma and fear and anxiety and everything can be released. Mm -hmm. yeah. So lovely. Yes. Yes, and that's so much too about, you know, the intelligence of the body and not only tuning in intuitively, but actually realizing our body has its own consciousness. That is why it's the expression of our bodies are temples of light and it's from within out that we radiate in that light in creating or building the light bodies, whether we call them the I am, it's the I am avatar consciousness of light and then we move into the um, I am body of light or whether we call this the diamond light body the rainbow light body it's really you know expressions of all of the same it's 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 crystalline consciousness where we starting to create those changes that are moving through the organs the body parts through the muscles right into the bone where we starting to feel still those moments of discomfort quite a bit of discomfort because so much change actually occurs as we become our body of light. And this really is our physical ascension process that we're talking about, yeah. because as spiritual ascension process, then we went through for so many years, which is what we needed to in waking each other up as the star seeds and the light workers and the way showers. And that was really everything that was done through the dormant DNA. 
that was the merging at the multidimensional level initially most for most of us with the star families that was our first um, remembrance our first awakening was their connection for many star seeds into um, the collective consciousness at the galactic level of the star seed clusters and then from there it was then deeper into the soul cluster which was um, possibly secondary because that remembrance of being a star seed was so strong that for me personally and for many i've spoken to you know it was really just that star family reunion of hearts initially and working with that and feeling that and going on all these incredible journeys and and that assistance from all the different star councils in um, igniting all those codes those light codes and star key codes within us and then that second part of the journey was then deep into the soul clusters that reunion of hearts with our own soul group and that monadic core group and from there then it was just the resurrection codes coming online the soul merger integration which we all experiencing now moving through the spiritual ascension process into this physical ascension process and this physical ascension process is all about the physical body right so that focus of being outwards will always be there and there will be times when we will just hold through the star gates and express those energies through our own bodies because that's such an important part of the work for this planet but at the same time or simultaneously there's a big focus on the physical body i'm finding now in the physical ascension process because as initiates in timelines past, if we're traveling those gateways, ancient Egypt, Atlantis, Lemuria, at this stage, we would have that opportunity to say, can I ascend? Should I ascend? Right. There yes. wasn't really many that said, let me hang about here. Because... <laughs> <laughs> Well, well, should I experience the eternal bliss on the inner plane? So <laughs> let me go through another unique experience of activating my heart of love through a very deep trauma. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what am I going to choose? <laughs> yeah. So it's so different because now we've actually we've all decided we, we're here. And we've gone through the traumas we've gone through what we need to for the most part to um hold ourselves now in the the the, the, the expression of the light body in its rejuvenation and regeneration of cellular discomfort and cellular disease starting from the inside out as we know because it is the soul light the soul energy that lifts the vibration and intuitively as we start to move into that, we experience different movements of the body, different levels of consciousness, which are expressed through the enzymes, the hormones, the chakras, the nadis, the meridians, the external lines. And again, through what we eat, through our choices of, should I watch Netflix or should I listen to two incredible light workers right now? <laughs> so... <laughs> This is really just an incredible moment to be here on this planet because collectively we've said, let's go through this physical ascension process and all become this body of light, this collective field of light. That is what the choice has been. Mm -hmm. And it's just amazing because I see in my own body those areas of discomfort are just surrounded in so much light. It's like just so incredible, just feeling just this, the, the, this healing energy, which initially for me was so much the expression of moments through the activation of the Kundalini energy, where I would go into spontaneous Kundalini activations. I'm sure, Sandra, that you experienced that too at some point. You know, for, for me, there was at some point just all these spontaneous Kundalini activations, which of course is also in its own way just very blissful because that energy, that kundalini energy and that healing energy and that sexual energy is all the same energy, mm -hmm. you know? So it's just that, that bliss that is moving through the body and being experienced um, energetically and physically, but it's a healing energy. And it's also that healing energy that is creating the physical changes through the energetic frequency within the body. 
Yes, and I feel it's really important that we do all that we can to support the body in this in this now in in the past it's been yes we want to uh, support the body as much as possible but right now we have this opportunity with dna strands coming online you know that etheric reconnection is is quite real and quite palpable for many mm -hmm. species right now really anchoring in those additional strands and when they when they come online and they are uh, again, activating, you know, the DNA within, especially in the bones, you know, the really deep stuff, deep tissues. When that DNA starts changing and you feel yourself expanding and all the heart fluttering and expansion and everything that goes on with that, it becomes, um, it's, it's not, uh, for, for me, that yes, there's the, the physical reaction and the body consciousness trying to keep up with my own higher consciousness so that that can be um, a, a simultaneous experience. But I'm also finding like the consciousness, the, the kind of quantum um, experience of like a, a unified DNA, you know, where the starseed template, like a, a, a DNA template for a, co a more cosmic experience, also um, becoming a very palpable present simultaneous experience for me where I feel like so connected to um, a galactic level, universal level, right through the body though. It's no longer a, um, we're, we're out there, we're out there. It's just so unified, yeah. so beautiful. Um, and you know, this truly is the center of my universe. This is, um, it's becoming so um, consistent and, and pure, again, that purification thing where even the, um, you know, in the past, an emotional desire to um, dim down, like it was just too intense. I just want to dim down and just be with, you know, in my own little uh, coping mechanism or whatever mm -hmm. came up in the past. It, it's not even a consideration anymore. It's just like, it just goes away. And for those people who are still, um, trying to revisit their coping mechanisms or old beliefs, just to like try it on one more time, just see if I can feel some comfort from that. It just doesn't, it's, it's so much easier to just breathe into this new level of a new mm -hmm. level of white body, a new level of DNA activation, a new level of, of the body expressing itself as source and, and really um, allow it. You know, mm. allowing of that, that I find yeah. freeing. It's just like, okay, I'm just, you know, for years it was ego, take a seat, emotions, just hang out. You know, it, every, the mind was getting a straight jacket for a while. <laughs> it's just like, just let it be, let it be, trust it, trust it. And yeah. again, that faith and, and trust has brought us into this vibration of unity that I have I have not experienced through this body, certainly, um, of a global unification with everything that's been created here. Mm -hmm. There's mm -hmm. forgiveness and gratitude and freedom into moving into this divine new earth template in mm -hmm. all of us. You know, it used to be you had to explore that yourself or with tiny groups, and now we're going by, by the thousands. That's right. It's really beautiful. It's so amazing. I mean, as you're talking, it's just up, all these galactic frequencies are just expanding. <laughs> I'm feeling it, you know, in so many different ways. It's like you're talking about it. I'm getting, you know, the image of all these ray frequencies activating around me and then these geometries and, and within this beautiful um, diamond sphere and metatrose cube and the flower of life and the fruit of life. And, and then with that, all these cosmic rays and the diamond frequencies and the rainbow light bridge and and then the DNA itself as vortices, as portals of light. So, you know, we, they receive us and transmit us. So for a very long time, they were just receivers. And then they turned into little wormholes, becoming exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah you're, that's, I feel that so deeply because for a while it was just pull it in, pull it in, pull it in. And all of a sudden you became the presence. And I feel that. And, and I've noticed with... Um, 
events or connections or even with sessions. It's just you become that new earth field. And we are becoming that crystalline bridge to the new earth, the rainbow body, all the prophecies about becoming the presence of source. You are that heaven on earth and, and you, your field and the DNA specifically, you know, all the trillions of DNA, but, but it serves as one, you know, you just feel like one giant field of diamond light and you just walk around with that field and you notice things self-correct in that field of purity, you know, the purer you can allow that to become and the more that you, you work on um, purifying that vibration, you notice things self-correcting, like your geometry, your light signature, starts self-correcting the reality around you to reflect that. It is so like a sacred mirror. It's really quite incredible. Mm -hmm. just, you don't have to do anything. You know, for so, for so long it was working and activating and clearing and especially yeah. great gatekeepers constantly clearing and activating and everything and now it's you just show up your dna does the work it's really quite incredible it's amazing because it's really just as you're saying that expansion of your own energy felt and also what i've noticed in that that flow is a little bit different because even though i've been in that flow for some time as we have as you know the the, the flames of divinity and holding that frequency but i noticed with that flow more and more you know because for a long time we would say we're here in service and we would look around i would look around to sort of see well how can i serve how can i best serve as an example and now it's like as i'm just going about my day things are happening that it's like i'm joining together pieces without any thought or consciousness into let me create something. It's rather just the pieces that I'm bringing together are just matching. You know, it's like bringing people together or resolving a problem someone has or an idea or an inspiration that connects into something else. And, and just seeing how it all just these puzzle pieces are expanding into greater levels of just slutting and fitting together just so incredibly perfectly. It's just so amazing. I know on the one side, of course, we talk about that as, you know, divine synchronicity and serendipity and, you know, with that trust and surrender, but there's a new sense of flow definitely coming online. And with that, of course, an expansion of our creator gifts. We are talking about the, the DNA, the additional DNA strands coming online. It's bringing greater levels of, you know, the creative gifts and the extrasensory perception gifts. So in, 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 for me, it's brought about a greater level of my own healing gifts. So for many years, in, in the first part of my journey, before working with people, I was working with animals and resources and making up flower and gem essences which was really tears and late 20s and really just loving it and I would walk up to a flower and it would tell me exactly what it's for and I would take a crystal geode with spring water and I collect that frequency and then I'd go and take that water and put it in the, the horse's bowl for example and that's what the horse needed that day you know or I would just walk up to the animal and just work exactly where it needed and the next set would win its, win its race. It was just amazing, you know, and then I, and I've worked a lot with other animals and, and wild animals. And of course, then so much else came online after that. It was just um, moving into more of the spiritual work and, and, and the transmissions and meditations that I left a little bit of that and the focus moved out of that into something else. And I found then that that came back online for me in a huge big way. When I went through a deeper integration of my own soul merge into being fully present or that experience as I call it of truly coming home that's just really just being grounded and present and being fully aware in your body although I do confess to that consciousness observing and consciousness is still a work in progress because you have to really be present in every minute so you can still have moments of unconsciousness. I feel that's really just part of us holding that frequency of vibration. But for the most part, you know, when those gifts come online, it's just absolutely incredible. So for me, I've just had such fun creating this whole range of lotions and potions. And I'm going to be creating this range of 
angelic infused essential oil blends that we can make in you know for love and and joy and passion and harmony and peace and then make it into household cleaning products that we have a toilet spray of passion and um, you know a broad <laughs> spray of love <laughs> <laughs> it's just incredible things that are happening, but also energetically into the body, you know, healing the body and working with the body and in, in new ways apart from all these lotions and healing creams and, and just making up the, the most incredible things and experiencing that. I feel for so many of us, it's an expansion of those extra sensory perception gifts and healing gifts. It's like even my gift of vision or seeing or clairvoyance or you know it's like having a conversation with someone and I'm already having an aerial view of where they are and what their surroundings are <laughs> <laughs> tuning into them completely and that's been, what do we actually even need a mobile phone for these days I have to say because you think of someone and you're really energetically connected and having a conversation with them aren't you yeah yeah, we call it the heart phone in Mount Shasta. That's <laughs> so amazing. Also, sit and cross paths with them if you want to talk to them in the in the physical, or you know, you think about somebody and they're right there. But that is, to me, that is a sign of this unification. You know, it's kind of reunification mm -hmm. of all the fractals. You know, we're all coming into that. But there is um, there is something too that uh, kind of paying forward the gifts and the things that. Um, perhaps we're early in our journey. I've noticed that with, um, with my work too. And all the things that I have learned through gatekeeping and working with portals and how to throw and create geometry on that level and how to, how to apply it into um, you know, the world, you know, into the physical uh, reality because so much of that work was with higher realms and everything. And now it's really coming into um, how to move energies around, how to shift um, a geometry within within a space or around a person, you know, for healing, yes. how to bring in different templates and things into their energy fields to create healing. I've worked with that myself. And so there's a lot of kind of paying forward everything that we've mm -hmm. learned and coming into that, mm -hmm. that future self, that ascended self now coming fully into the now and really experimenting with it and I've noticed too like the flow is different and it becomes mm -hmm. I, I think part of our mastery journey too, training us to be really in the now like feel into what is presenting right now rather than trying to um, dominate or steer or control a, a daily agenda or a schedule mm -hmm. and we really have to be patient with each other too as we go through that but there is um, it's feeling into these natural um, vibrational fields that are around us, providing us with different levels of creation. And it, 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 it does put us in the moment because you'll notice if you try to push something, um, it, it doesn't work, you know? So any kind of efforting or trying to create something, and if it's not working, you really have to let it go. So I feel like there's a lot of um, kind of a rising and falling uh, thing coming right now with this natural flow where it's like, let things crumble when they need to crumble let it go really learning how to surrender things with love it's just let it be let there be closure and then letting the new things present with a much uh, much more ease and grace mm -hmm. we've ever mm -hmm. done this before you know, it's, and it's, and and also a very important point that you made there sandra is very much related to obviously with the stargates and the portals incoming cosmic frequencies, astrological influences. So even while we're holding ourselves as flames of divinity and we're experiencing all that is in, in that range and that full range of feelings, of course, we're still going to be experiencing, um, you know, unique experiences, um, not to know ourselves as love, but to assist in the clearing because we really know ourselves as love now. And also being energetically affected by some of those frequencies and energies, because each country has its own energetic frequency, does it? Each um, county or, or, or state, province has its own unique energy. And we affected then by, um, you know, solar flares and photonic rays and cosmic rays. So there's so much that is still energetically affecting us. And sometimes that energy is just, you know, we're buzzing 
aren't we? In the, you know, light energy and frequency or other times, it's just, wow, you know, I can't get out of bed today, for example. I, unfortunately, I'm not in the, the luxury of actually being able to completely say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm cleared my schedule for today because when you have kids, um, you know, it's a different schedule altogether. But creating then that time between that space where you say, okay, well, you know, I plan to do this and that from a work perspective and right now I just need to breathe and meditate and experience those energies because there's something going on here. And I know for a large part of whatever's been experiencing that, that causes a, a ripple of whether it's um, discomfort or stress or anx anxiousness, for example, it's not my energy. You know, that I know for sure. And then I need to really just be holding that energy because it means that we're tuning in and we're clearing collectively at what is actually going on and being cleared around this earth because it's not only ourselves as, as we know the vibrating light portals, but it's also all the time as we connecting with, with Gaia, as we're connecting into now what's what's been experienced is very much just elemental consciousness. So it's the fairies. I've got brownies in my house talking to me. They're amazing brownies. I've been introducing the boys to this because I put together this incredible program called the Angel Tools for Parents and Children. And we work with all these lovely angels and um, I put these invocations on and affirmations in the evening when we start getting ready for bed. And in Archangel Raphael, we meet the brownies and the fairies and I think the gnomes and, uh, you know, something else. And, and the brownies then, you know, come at night and they can also help around the house and help you when you've lost things. So my boys need their ears pick up <laughs> because you know how they lose things. They've lost their toy or they've lost their cards or they've lost whatever it is. And, you know, then it's always like, mom, what, mom, where is this? And where's that? So the one day I said to them, ask the brownies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and really just amazing. Like the next day there was, you know, someone's comic book. And, you know, the next day there was a card that was missing. Thing. It was just amazing. So, you know, the, the, the story goes that the brownies like honey and porridge. So we started to put out a little bit of porridge <laughs> for them. <laughs> and well, not much. <laughs> so there's a, <laughs> there's a true sense of feeling the energy of the brownies. You know, and years ago, you know, I really, I would feel the energy of the fairies and I still feel them now as kind of more, or I see them, I perceive them more as like light balls. But I had such a connection. I was coming again into nature, spirit, intelligence. I remember doing a workshop and having this little leprechaun sitting in my ear. And, you know, I'm speaking a little leprechaun language. And leprechauns traditionally come from Ireland, from Southern Ireland. And this was in the UK when I lived there. And so I said to the, 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 the group, I said, did anyone just come from Ireland? And this lady put up her hand and she said, yes, I actually just arrived yesterday from the, on the train. You know, I just came back from Southern Ireland. So I said, well, you brought a leprechaun with you. And it's jumped onto my shoulder and it's quite upset because now it wants to go home. And, you know, <laughs> we have to put it back outside. So we were fortunately on this lovely piece of land. And the UK also has just some incredible hot spots of, of real sacred land. And we took this unicorn, a unicorn, which is another thing coming up, unicorns, this leprechaun. And we put it outside and we just, you know, did this incredible ceremony for this le leprechaun. <laughs> and it's just amazing, amazing how, how nature, spirit, intelligence is chatting between mm -hmm. the golden dragons and the golden dragon breathing and the unicorns and the brownies and the fairies. Mm -hmm. You know, I really, I have to say, it's just really quite incredible and amazing when you can really tune in and know that we're actually not alone in this consciousness that it's not just the human consciousness or the galactic consciousness the soul consciousness is expanding but actually it's the frequency of all the elementals too on the nature intelligence and nature spirits intelligence that's also um feeling the energies and shifting too in their level of our old bandwidth of consciousness 
Yeah, absolutely. And I spend a lot of time uh, up on Shasta in the, in the wilderness and that connection with the kingdoms and the trees and the elementals became so strong. I mean, for, for me, that is a very strong aspect of embodying the Christ consciousness is the ability to um, feel in and communicate with, you know, all of a sudden the flowers were toning and the trees were speaking. Mm. And, and there are other beings like Sasquatch are, are very present um, on the mountain as well. And I've seen them and interacted with them and they have a very strong telepathic communication. But I had uh, recently had the experience of learning from a grandmother tree that I've been camping under for, for six years now. You know, that's one of my spots. But, um, and, and I've planted crystals all in her, in her bark and everything. And I go back and kind of vibe up the crystals and give her a hug and, and always um, greet her because she's got a very strong presence. But she, um, she was talking about, you know, the neural network of all the trees on Shasta being connected and then how they can communicate with the uh, redwoods that are supposedly Venusian um, origin um, uh, on the coast, because I was always seeing the redwoods on the coast and I visited with them and that we do have this connection with the oceanic realms with the dolphins on Mount Shasta. There's a lot of dolphin portals um, uh, on Mount Shasta, but she, uh, I leaned against her and I see um, just because of my, I, I feel because of my gatekeeper um, work that I, I con am consistently seeing the spinning portals of light everywhere. And they're just clear. It's not light. It's just clear spinning fields. And that's just part of my consciousness. I look around, I just see it everywhere. And then they started turning kind of diamond crystalline light lately. But, uh, but I leaned against this, uh, against her to, to meditate. And I closed my eyes and I have a little crystal grid in front of me. And I start seeing this giant, one of these giant fields start opening up, spinning very quickly. And, and she's, you know, she's kind of got her presence like on my shoulder. She's like, let me show you, let me show you. She's like, move into it, merge with it. And I was merging with it and everything. All of a sudden it was very kind of psychedelic, but it, it just turned very watery. And, and for me, like the 5D realm, it feels very watery. It's very flowy. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels very liquid light. You know, it's been described as liquid light for a while. Um, but everything became very flowy and then started dissolving and all the trees are, are just coming alive and everything. It was quite psychedelic. But um, she's, she's reminded me, she's like, let, let, let us show you, let us show you because she's going to teach me how the Sasquatch move around <laughs> because they use the, they use the trees to bilocate. So I'm like, Ooh, this is exciting. You know, but that kind of interaction is available to us. The more that we move into this unity consciousness, because it is, um, and I'm someone who works ex exclusively with crystals with, um, with gatekeeping. And that's been, um, key and i want to share with you sister this fun story from gosh years ago when i first came up to mount shasta you had an activation and i don't remember what it was for but i was like and this is back when i had a little flip phone i had this little flip phone i'm like oh i'm gonna go up on the mountain and i'm gonna join and rita and and the group and do this activation and i had just started learning from my higher levels how to put crystals in the ground and i had this beautiful um you know one of those vocal cuts is kind of uh, cut like a diamond is not round but it was kind of flat mm, there was snow on the ground so they're planted in the snow this little crystal grid i start listening to and rita and we're all going through this it was just beautiful and these beings came in and all of a sudden there was this giant flash of light and just beamed my crystal and this huge like angelic with a with this huge rainbow just appeared in this thing with this huge um flash of gold i mean gold not like a, a refractive like it looks gold if you hang it at the, at the right angle actual gold strand went right through this thing with this huge oh. gold swirl around it and it was the first time that any of my crystals were encoded that way so i was like wow you know, if you like hold this or feel yeah. um, with these crystal grids, you know, this will start happening. And it started, it happened over and over and over again. So now it's like one of my things, how to light and code crystals. And later on, um, they started putting in um, things that didn't look like 
they belong in crystals. Like, I, I don't know if I can even hold this up, but there's like little spheres and yeah. crystals. Yes. That. But things that should not appear in crystals started appearing in crystals. And it was the galactic levels and the master levels actually creating these crystal tools for, for me to learn to make gatekeeping easier mm -hmm. to find those higher frequency and use them as healing tools. I feel that it's wonderful that we're connecting to do this, this crystalline <laughs> Yay. together because you're the one that I was listening to when that first, when I first was learning how to do that. So it's beautiful little me forward here. <laughs> yeah, and it's so amazing. And you're talking about that. And apart from, you know, we're going to talk now a little bit about what we're going to do in the tele webinar. But I don't know if you, you saw the seven pointed star coming through. It was, I think, in Dorset in the beginning of June, one of the, the um, crop circles. Because yes. as I was looking at that, it, it somehow I saw it um, a couple of days ago. And at the, the, well, actually I saw it on the 7th. I saw it on the 7th of June and I saw the seven pointed star. And I was realizing it was just this connection apart from, I mean, I so love these crop circles, you know, just these geome geometric signatures coming through. But it was also so related to what we're experiencing now with the, the, the crystal grid, the crystal consciousness is shifting us into up to seventh dimensional frequency. Because so many of us, you know, we've been talking so, so, for so long about fifth dimension, you know, and I feel that we actually be on fifth dimension. You know, we've experienced fifth dimensional consciousness, many of us, of course, there's still a lot that are still getting there. And that those that have gone ahead or the advanced way showers, such as ourselves, have been really been experiencing, we experienced for a long time aspects of the sixth dimensional consciousness. And now we're moving into shifting into what seventh dimensional consciousness. So seventh dimensional consciousness, then it's what is it? What does it hold? And I've, there's different aspects that I'm just going to be speaking as it comes through to me right now. One is very much related to um, increased levels of experiencing what we call the new earth crystals, the crystal templates that you're talking about, how you program the crystals. What is coming online is that we're starting to talk about the new earth um, uh, crystals coming on the, the smoky quartz seed crystals, new earth smoky quartz seed crystals, new earth crystals, citrine crystals, amethyst crystals, that these crystals now are being programmed from a galactic level at the same time energetically through the light body of mother earth to hold that seventh dimensional frequency, which is responding to our bodies, our bodies of light and the cellular encoding that is coming through from the crystalline codex, the matrix, within the body and how that's expanding out. And these crystals themselves then are also assisting in lifting the consciousness of the sacred earth, but amplifying our ESP gifts, our, our, our creative gifts, our extrasensory perception gifts. And if I have a look at that, of course, this is all going back also into, we having timelines that are coming through that it's Lemuria and Atlantis in particular. It's almost like those encodings of the crystal consciousness from that time is coming down into this time. And we're getting, for example, the new Earth smoky sea crystal as an effective karmic cleanser. Um, we're getting the citrine new Earth sea crystal, which is also about greater levels of abundance and accessing our gifts and skills from parallel realities and dimensions. There's another one there coming up, the tangerine dream. New Earth Seed Crystal activating solar alignment and taking us deeper into the original divine egg cell blueprint. So there's quite a few that seems to be coming through there. Just amazing stuff. And the New Earth Quartz Crystal, which is a master healer used for um, any condition that's coming through. The Pink New Earth Seed Crystal, which is attuning us to the pink flame of um, unconditional compassionate love. And that's dissolving and transmuting etheric and emotional debris, no longer needing to be experienced and allowing us to access the golden heart of Christ consciousness. And I feel from this also we can even be calling it, whether we call it the golden heart, the diamond heart, this is really deepening into this um, diamond light consciousness and all these beautiful 
encodings that we are experiencing through the crystals is also part of the work that we ask to do to take the physical crystals we may have and to program them to the consciousness of the new earth crystal templates so that we can take that out and we can utilize that crystal consciousness in a new way. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this, this is the, just to touch on like with the, with the gatekeeping and the grid work, you know, for over the last six years now, um, the activation of all of this, what we call the new earth grid system, which was different from the classic ley line system, we were always using crystals because, and, and this is something that I learned from Thoth and from my journey to Arkansas to activate those ancient crystal beds and everything, that there were actual um, structures within the crystal beds that were encoded for if we achieved a certain level of vibration, it's like um, they're like little time locks and they go off when the frequency right. of the planet raises and the timeline trajectories suddenly come on and all of a sudden you were able to turn those things on. But the way that we could communicate with them and the way that we could uh, connect them up to the, the crystal and unity grid was through planting crystals. So all these gatekeepers and grid workers have been planting crystals everywhere and they actually create their own network to unify crystalline core of Gaia, the crystalline beds which are threaded into etherically too with the crystalline core of Gaia and up to the crystalline grid so that we could actually create crystalline bridges to the new earth so that it would as she expanded it would be an easier um, uh, journey for, for the planetary consciousness as well as our own bodies so that mm -hmm. we can create that that bridge and now we're becoming that bridge mm -hmm. but the crystals have so much to share with us because they have connections to we're able to communicate with off-world brothers and sisters through the crystals mm -hmm. we're able to communicate with other realms we're able to communicate directly with the crystalline core of gaia with the crystal beds it's just like one big interconnected network mm -hmm. And I noticed too, and I'm glad that you mentioned the the 7D because um, the gatekeepers have been working on anchoring that 7D and now we're bringing in the 9D. So that's how quickly we're moving is like we're able to do, you know, the five strand and the seven strand and then the nine and then we'll eventually we'll work on the 12. But yes. right now that 7D is why so many way showers right now are experiencing that consistent quantum state you know when they go into meditation it's it's so it's so present and it feel a little overwhelming to the body or the energy feels but you're like oh my gosh i almost just dis disappeared you know it just feels so expansive and so bright and clear and pure and everything and then we've got this 90 anchoring that's going on now too because we are moving into a much higher trajectory mm -hmm. crystalline consciousness is capable of of not just um, bilocating through all those dimensions, but it's able to assist us in merging with all of those fields within with yes. themselves, that consciousness. And I found too, like I have, it's funny you mentioned seven. So I have a seven gate crystal, which is a- an Amazing. Oh, pretty huge. Wow, but, that's amazing. Yeah, and I've done uh -huh. a lot of work with her up on, on Shasta and I discovered okay that um, she's capable of encoding um, uh, other crystals. You know, she'll take the codes from, this is the first time the yeah. Lemurian showed up, was the first time I took her up to Southgate. All of a sudden there was wow. physical beings coming in. I was like, oh my goodness. So there is definitely something to open, that opening of this, this seven gate that we had years ago. Right. Um, but now when we're able to, um, they, sh they talk to each other. So I'll have sessions with people who also have crystals and we'll aim them at each other. And they, they communicate, you know, or- It's amazing. Yeah, it's I brought like yes. a new, I just brought a new um, a crystal into my collection. She's kind of coated with- the Oh, people. lovely. Look at that. It's, uh, there's they talk to each other. I mean, it's just like they have full on conversations. I mean, it's, it's really quite um, incredible. So I feel like the work that, that we can do um, is not just um, a physical crystal to crystal mm -hmm. transmission, but it's also um, 
you it, you know these have these can have etheric representations like if i forget to take her up on the mountain i can call her into my field yes so very definitely that is uh, again you know a side effect of this kind of going quantum 7d um, level of unity consciousness is just a, a more expanded level of unity consciousness, but really bringing those things into your field and not, um, it, it feels like in the past we could do it, but we had to concentrate on it. And now it's more instantaneous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, it's lovely, lovely. What a lovely description, Sandra. And absolutely everything you sound so completely resonate with. You know, I love crystals like you do. I'm actually just sitting in a different space to where I usually sit, where I've got all my also incredible, awesome crystals. And of course, they hold such a vibration, you know, the, the, this high vibe. But you're talking about, and I've done this too so often, where I've been places and it comes to mind an image of a particular crystal that I could use for a situation or with someone, but I don't have it there. And I draw upon the energy of their crystal consciousness and I actually, you know, energetically transfer it to that person. So I can do it obviously through their higher light or if I've got them with me, I'm transferring that consciousness of that crystal too. And I remember many years ago, I used to do that when I started to work with um, actually flower and gem essences, because that was a huge part of my work too, my initial work. Uh, I started making up flower and gem essences, and then I following that I made up light essences, but I always used also physical crystal as the programming from the, the, the core groups, the beings of light from one high. But I would look at a picture of a flower, a photo of a flower, and I would pick up energetically the signature of that essence and be able to transmit it through i used to work with i call it the overlighting diva of healing and pan and transmit it energetically through the energy of pan which i would see as the um, bridge between the cosmic and earth frequency to the um overlighting diva of the original divine a cell blueprint so working with the, the body energetics, of course, nowadays it becomes so, you know, for me, it's not important to be naming specific things. It's just having that gift and knowing. So it's picking up just the frequency or energy, and we can do this with anything and everything. I mean, I still so love, you know, the pyramids. I find the pyramidal energy is just an incredible one to be um, energizing, whether it's essences or crystals or um, even your vitamin range, for example, I still work quite a lot with that and, and, and diamond energy, but the crystal energy, it's just such an incredible energy, not only in transmitting, but also in receiving programmings mm -hmm. and being able to work with it energetically too, such a beautiful thing to be able to do. And you can actually do that energetic work with any type of vitamin that you have too. You don't have to, you know, for some at some point i actually just decided i didn't want to take vitamins you know and i would take just the vitamin in my hand and i would draw upon the energetic frequency of that vitamin and take it in why well, do the same with after a while in the very beginning when i worked with um flower and gem essences i used to make oral um, preparations solutions and then after a while i just like i didn't want to take anything into my body and i would just put a couple of drops in my in my hand or on my body and nowadays i just make up things that you can actually just put on your body put on your face or spray around you because you know not only is it just holding that frequency and energy and amplifying it but it's just everything has been transmitted that we actually need yeah. so exciting hey such yeah. an exciting moment <laughs> <laughs> and, and it opens the doors for so much creativity and i feel like and any anyone who loves crystals the way the way that we do you know they're they just they have so much more to offer and when when we see i was exposed to um again in arkansas that whole experience i i i did some mining you know where you you're the first contact for a crystal that just came out of the ground you know it's really a beautiful experience and i honored it and welcomed them and put them all around my bed and under my pillow and everything for for the first night together you know like oh and all these beings came in and they were you know at, not just activating them but they were using them and and the crystals were singing and toning and they were working on me with the crystals and i feel like we can really kind of bring in that that mm -hmm and those, mm. those skills now kind of working in the way that 
our brothers yes. and sisters, our higher levels. Yes. Yes. Yes, and of course, and it is going back into the Atlantean because mm -hmm. that Atlantean timeline was really where we actually just mastered it. And of course, so we had also the, uh, you know, following that law of wine, and then we had the sons of Bilal and everything that fell apart as it sometimes does, as we've experienced it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But that holding that energy too of just how the, the, the crystal consciousness is talking to us and how we can utilize that energy is certainly coming online in a completely different way. And I feel that particular um, timeline, that golden age timeline, is actually merging more into this timeline right now as we are experiencing the solstice energy or leading up to that. And that too is bringing... Um, aspects of whether you call it the future of past selves, merging, integrating, and being experienced into the crystalline field and the, the unity field, and a new way that we can work with crystal consciousness too, apart from the experience of our own um, crystal bodies, the crystalline frequency within ourselves, igniting and activating into the diamond life body. Yeah, and I'm so it's very solstice too, because solstice is such a. Mm -hmm. it, it's always been a vital gateway, but this one in particular, because we've just shifted into this higher trajectory at the at the beginning of June, um, the uh, much higher experiences are available for so many. So I know personally, I'm going to go into um, a, a deep states of meditation and purification and everything mm -hmm. preparation. Um, over the next couple of weeks just to make sure that I'm as clear and can receive as much as possible because I do like you I've I see that I, I see our our future self just coming right in with that golden age timeline and it's it it's so it's so present and so available and it feels like you could just just merge right into it you know so I know the energies always complement that but when we have a, a unified focus of course, that means that more of us um, can then activate that template and spread it yes. you know, yes. the global templates. So yes. our crystal adventures <laughs> next week um, yes. definitely hold the intention of, um, of aligning with that frequency because definitely the crystal and structures within ourselves and a lot of people experiencing seeing crystals come out of themselves. You know, some people are just like, oh, you know, this oh, is right. you put your hand in the sun, don't you? And it just gets all the yeah, they're all there. Yeah. yeah that's but, right. Yeah. And some, of the, some of the younger star seeds are actually pulling out emeralds and sapphires and like out of, right out of their skin, you know, it's like incredible what's happening to us. So we are becoming that crystallized crystal Christ consciousness, um, in, in quite a physical mm. way. So I feel mm. our adventure <laughs> next Saturday will definitely um assist people in aligning with that and not only it's it's an act of service so the more crystals and those crystal intentions and and the more that we can get those crystals in the ground then for solstice as a unified um as a unified service um we're also activating that for everything. that's lovely yes that's nice i think that's also such an important one as you're talking about you know just placing the crystals physically too within the ground you know just being drawn to do that that's wonderful well i'm so so looking forward to our time together sandra and you know just also just experiencing right now just such a high frequency i think just in that connection you know with us and, and our energy just expanding and deepening into that unified field and it's just been so incredible and and, and wonderful to be connecting with you too at this moment and of course all our incredible light tribe tuning in i think what would be quite nice as we just end here we can say a last word is we could just sign out with a little bit of light language see what comes up there as we end this uh, um, short video or perhaps it wasn't so short video. <laughs> 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 oh, beautiful. Hmm. Just for the grounded sense, 
just bringing in uh, the higher frequency of that uh, of that event that we're co-creating of solstice energies and just bringing that fully into the now moment and right into the heart everyone just taking a breath Inola Monshalo Kina Kina Ko Rola no Mokila Kina Shuno Kuaia Ia no Kuaia Ia no Kuaia I Monso Ia Ia no Kuaia no Moa Ia no Roro Dono Monso no Kia Ia Ia O Moa Ia no Moa Ia Ia O Moa Ia no Moa Ia I no So I Monso Ia Kia In Ko no Kui no Monso Ia Ia Na Shiro Lolo no Moa Ia and as we just feel ourselves grounding into the energy of the earth and into the crystal heart of Mother Earth, Grounded and centered, we draw to us the crystal frequencies and energies that are most beneficial to us at this time and that speak to us personally and collectively as we head into this beautiful transmission together. The collective consciousness of crystals and the unity grid of divine love. As Sandra Walter and then Rita Melchizedek. And so we see you again very soon, beloveds, from my heart from Sandra's heart into every heart of creation, blessings in love. Namaste. New Earth Cosmic Conversations.